Ah oui. <laughs> so I have to stop it. Oh, that's a difficult decision. <laughs> I know, it's a bit predictable, isn't it? To play Robin. But it's good, isn't it as well? And actually, Robin, I think, is a really good example of what I want to talk about, of reshaping, of female power and integrity. Just think about how, and I'm sure you know the story, think about how she decided not to go with the big labels, but actually take control herself of both the artistic side and the business side and actually show that you can be commercially successful with still having integrity. So I think she's a really good starting point for a talk like this, which is about reshaping. Here she is. Saw her this summer in North America, by the way. It was amazing to see the audience. These Swedish girls who used to live next door to me, actually. Huh? Reshaping the future. Reshaping is what it's all about today. And of course, there is this big need for reshaping. We've heard it. We've heard it through the stories from Afghanistan, from Naomi Klein, of course, reshaping, the need to reshape the environment, the need to think, create new stories, the need to run the world in a different way, to deal with wars, poverty, integration, diversity, and also the way we do and perhaps teach business. I would argue that many institutions we see today are created by men for men. This is Stockholm School of Economics 100 years ago. All male institution. Today, 100 years after the start, we're equal when you look at the students. Forget about the faculty right now. <laughs> it's a sad story. We're not going to tell that one tonight. But the students, it's actually about half half today. It's amazing, isn't it? You know, I, I would like to keep it that way. I don't usually say that, but at this time, could we freeze this moment and actually keep it 50-50 equal? Do you think we will do it? No? Do you think 100 years from now, Stockholm School of Economics will be an all-female institution, perhaps? Some, no, not really. Think about that, because if you think about education, it is very clear, and I'm going to be very serious now, it's very clear that girls and women are dominating higher education in the Western world, not in Afghanistan, of course, but in the Western world, in many, many countries. If you look at Sweden as an example, 20 years from now, we think, or the statisticians think, that we will have but more than half of the female population will have a higher university education. More than half. While on the male side, about a third will have a university education. So we're actually seeing girls and women taking over higher education. And you can think about, you know, the reasons for that. You know, maybe perhaps it's the school system, which is one of those institutions that are not created by men for men, actually a lot by women. Students in school, early school, in the early grades, they meet mo mainly female teachers. Maybe that's a reason. Another reason might be that women really fight 
to get to those top positions. While a lot of boys, and I tell you, I'm a teenager parent myself, tend to play a lot of World of Warcraft instead of studying. And it's very typical. You see the girls being stressed and the boys being much more laid back, but also perhaps falling behind. And is this serious or not? You know, how will that reshape the world? Will that reshape the world? Does it matter at all? Is it not important? Will, will it lower the value of higher education? Or will we perhaps see a change in society? There are researchers, such as Bo Rothstein, who just wrote an article in a book about this, saying that it's actually a danger when we see a high percentage of low-educated, perhaps even unemployed men, and also, and I'm going to come to this point, unmarried. A higher percentage of unemployed, low-educated, and perhaps unmarried men, lacking both jobs and love, might be a threat to society. Something I really, as a firm believer in equality, think we should care about. It's not really good. It's better with that equal balance. And why would they be lacking love, you might ask. Do we perhaps need to reshape family as well, or the idea of family? You see, if you look at society, and Swedish society, to take that as an example, there are lots of singles, and two groups are more common when you talk about singles. One is high-educated women. If you, like me, have a PhD, you have the lowest chances of all groups of being married. It's true. Look at the numbers. It's the lowest chances of all groups of being married. The other group that tends to be outside the love circle, or whatever we should call it, are less educated men. Men, the second group with the lowest chance of getting married, are men with only a high school diploma. So low educated men, as we know, a growing group, increasing group, and high educated women, also an increasing group. Those are the two big groups of singles. And you know what? They don't marry. And they don't have children with each other. And that's why I'm saying, perhaps we need to reshape family. You know, perhaps we need to drop those old gender roles and think about, because the gender roles are still there, it's still high-educated women looking for equally often older, edu equally educated, often older men, and men looking for younger, equally or less educated women. That might need to change. You know, all of you girls sitting here, this is not, you know, female students, not a good place to meet a man. Eh? No good odds, you should go somewhere else, I think. Eh? And is this serious? Is it ser I mean, think about it, is it serious? You know, I don't think we need to have exactly this family with one woman, one man, and a child. But how do we need to reach it? Is it important? Maybe love is not important. Or is it important? I would argue it is. And you know what? I think this is already evident. You know, I went here as a student about 25 years ago. And I had a really good, we weren't so many, we weren't equal at that time. And I had a really good group of girlfriends. We were really tight. Today, there are two who still live with the fathers of the kids. All the rest of us are single mothers. 
all, all. It's already there. It's already happening. Do we need to reshape the family or the idea of family? Is it important with love or not? Maybe we just need to reshape the gender roles, as we see it in many other areas of society. Yeah. If you look at the economy, we're already seeing men, girls and women taking a much more active role. If you think about the old gender roles, it used to be the woman as being a bit passive and the man being active. In many, many cases, when you look at, for example, developing countries of giving support, economic development, micro-loans, micro-credits to women, putting more women into education, a certain recipe for getting more growth. So definitely taking a much more leading role in society when it comes to economy, for sure, much more active. And you can also see, if you look at the statistics for salaries in the U.S., for the first time in history, young single women are actually having higher salaries than young single men at the same age and educational level. That's the first time in history. Things are changing, huh? Eh? And maybe we need to worry more about the men. You know, 100 years from now, somebody else will stand here and Talk TEDx men, perhaps, huh? I would, maybe, huh? Worth thinking about. Another w place where we are, female and, me and women and girls are reshaping society, is of course when it comes to entrepreneurship. Uh, I took one example Oprah, who just created her own network reshaping the business. When I usually take this example, I do it every now and then in class, it's always somebody who tells me that, well, wait a minute, Oprah, that is not serious business, is it? It's not serious business. That's nothing you should talk about in a business school. Is that business? Is that serious? And I think, you know, that's very typical. Perhaps we also need to think about what is considered serious and what is not considered serious in society. Talking about things like feelings, relationships, the body, the mind, that is not serious. Screwdrivers are. That's serious business. And, and coming to the same kind of subject, you can also think about what is success? Thinking about seriousness, and another thing is, what is success? I, I think a lot about it here, being one of the few female, in the female faculty members. Uh, we have very, very, very exact, you know, this is exactly what we should do to reach a full professor position. And I know I will never do it. Never in my life. I will never become full professor here. Um, actually, I don't know any. If I look at my old colleagues, my male colleagues, a lot of them have become full professors, but no female colleagues so far. Um, and I sometimes I think, so I'm definitely not successful. You know, I'm really not doing those things that I should be doing. And they're very specific. You should write articles, you should do serious research and write articles in journals, in specific journals. And I don't do that. I do research about things I really like, the things I'm passionate about, things I think important. I also write in places where hundreds or thousands of people read the articles instead of in the academic journals, where, in general, on average, four people read the articles. It's true, four people. What is success, what is not? A colleague asked me the other day, you know, are you happy? Yeah, I'm happy. So is that not being successful? And I think you need to think, everybody needs to think about that. What is success and what is seriousness? However, 
there's one area, and I'd like to share it with you, where I don't think we should spend so much energy on reshaping, and this goes for many, both men and women these days, that's the body. Maybe we should not spend so much time on thinking about reshaping our own bodies. Uh, I tend to think that maybe still I would have become a full professor, or at least I would have a chance to at one day become a full professor, had I not spent so much time gaining, losing, and worrying about my weight. And I'm serious about this, you know. Once again, it's a non-serious subject. Is it important or not? You know, I've done research about that area too, body businesses. And the amount of this money and time we spend on these issues, I tell you, it's serious business for sure. Multi-billion dollar industry. For good, for bad. Energy that could be used somewhere else, thinking about the more important issues, perhaps, in society. I'm thinking about the number of kilos I probably lost and gained since I went here. I think that's, you know, to be tons by now. Eh? Up and down, spending all the time. And I'm not alone. I know I'm not alone. If you look at the research, there are a lot of people spending a lot of time thinking about, could I look like that, this top model? Who, by the way, is a he? It's true. It's so convenient when you want to show fashion, you know. No hips, no boobs. Perfect for showing fashion. And that's an idiom? Perhaps not. Huh? And I think, you know, it works for my last point, because my last point, apart from maybe not, you know, thinking so much about reshaping your body, uh, uh, would be not to focus so much on men in power. Another thing I really would like to share, an advice would be to say that, I wish I hadn't spent so much time thinking about all these men in suits to be honest. I really wish so. You know, why not look at... Oops, here they come slowly. Where's the last one? Um, why not look at uh, female role models instead? Females with power. And worry about the men without power not the ones with suits. Let's discuss it. Let's, do you want to help me? Let's have a little discussion now about you know, two of these questions. And I do think they're very, very important. What about this one? If a majority of women and a minority of men will have higher education, how will that reshape society? How will that reshape society? And perhaps the second one, which I'm really curious about, how can we reshape the idea of a family? Or are there other questions? Feel free. I'll be walking around, collecting answers from you, and wishing you all good luck and hoping that this, with this equal basis of men and women among students, will also be the future. Thanks. <laughs>